Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. I'm drinking Fable Grounds coffee today and it's the Summer Court Coconut Cream flavor. My goodness, it's good. I do recommend. So today's video is going to be my April reading wrap up. I did only end up reading five books in April, which I would say that's my average. I average about five books a month, but it was lower than my March reading. So I was just kind of feeling some type of way about that. But I also feel like April was kind of a weird month for me. So it makes sense that it was slower reading wise, but I also had some books that I really liked. So it is what it is, you know? And even if you read one book a month or one book every few months, like that's perfectly fine. I'm just hard on myself. So the first book that I was able to read was The Atlas Six by Olive e. Blake. Now I'm sure you've heard of this book. It's been everywhere. It became like a book talk sensation, I'm pretty sure. I do understand the hype for it, but let me get into that. So basically you're following six characters. They are entering this competition of sorts to become members of the Alexandrian Society, like the Library of Alexandria but only five will be inducted and one will be eliminated. And you're, so you're kind of following these six different characters as they're going through this journey. There's dark academia, magicians, but it's a very character driven story. There were things that I really liked about this book. And then there were other things about this book that I didn't care for very much. Overall, I would say it was easy for me to stay invested and to want to continue and find out what happens, despite being a more plot driven reader, because that's what I would define myself as a more plot driven than character driven reader. I did like a lot of the characters, which kind of surprised me, while others I wanted to shove off of a building. I'm looking at you, Parisa. But I did really like the setting that was really fun and all the interpersonal relationships that surround this story. But the plot, so I said this is a more character driven story, so obviously the plot's kind of in the background. The plot was not very clear, but it was not really described or hinted at completely. It seemed to kind of rely on being shouted by mystery or with mystery way up until the end of the book. So there weren't a lot of answers at the end. So that was kind of, you know, that's just something to be aware of if you are a more plot driven reader that the plot is not the main point of this book. Maybe it's a point on the later books because this is going to be a series. I know there's the second one's coming out soon. I'm not sure what if it's going to go beyond a duology or what, but I know the second one's coming out this year, I believe. So that's just something to be aware of that the plot is not really what's going to drive you in this book. There's a little, there's little pieces of it, but it's not the main thing. A lot of the elements of the magic I really loved and were really interesting and very interesting, but it wasn't very well fleshed out. So you don't really know everything on how the magic system works. And the different characters have different ways of like abilities or powers on how they can manipulate things, whether it's physical matter or mental things or emotions. So that stuff was kind of interesting and cool. I really appreciated that and how each of the characters plays into that and they all had different strengths, but it doesn't really explain, especially the physical ones, it doesn't really explain how they do it. it just kind of sort of describes what's happening, but even then not in necessarily a lot of detail. So if that kind of bothers you, that's something to be aware of, but I did still find it interesting. So it was kind of, you know, not really fleshed out and at times just kind of skipped over entirely. But overall, I thought it was a good book and I did enjoy it. I'm really eager to get to book two to see how the story continues and see what book two will hold, especially now that the author is going to be working with a publisher like more in depth because, you know, she wrote this on her own. And then when it was picked up by a publisher, they kind of did edits. But now that she's going to be working with a publisher for book two the whole way through, I'm curious to see how the story will go. And I did give this four out of five stars. The next book that I was able to read was A Forgery of Roses by Jessica S. Olson. The cover for this book is absolutely beautiful. I love it. This is a new release. It came out in March or April, I believe. And the author has one other book out at the moment called Sing, I think it's called Sing Me Forgotten and it's a Phantom of the Opera retelling. And I was always curious about that book, but I haven't read that one. So I went ahead and picked this one up as it's a new release and I was really curious about the premise. So basically the premise of this book is that the main character Myra has this magic and the magic in this world is related to art. So if you paint something, so say you're, this actually happens in the book, but say your dog is injured or has like a spot on its skin that's not right. She would paint the dog as healed and then it would heal. There's a lot of different ways the magic can go, but it has to do with the painting and the artistry, which is really cool and really interesting. I like how different that is and that was a really cool element. But so she has this ability and this magic 
and somebody comes to her basically saying that their son has been killed and they want her to bring him back because there's like a certain timeline of when you can bring a body back to life and when they're just like dead. So they call her in to try to revive their son and in the midst of it she's trying to figure out what happened and kind of like solve this murder mystery aspects because if she doesn't know what happened she doesn't know how to fix it and her art and her magic will only work in certain elements. So that's kind of the premise of the story and it was really interesting to get into and there was a lot of really cool elements to it. And like I said, the magic system was really cool and interesting as it was art based, which was fun. And there's this scene with a beetle that was gruesome, intriguing, and really cool. And if you've read this and you know what I'm talking about, well, I will say that the magic system is not super well explained and it was not really well understood, but I think that's coming from a place because the main character did not really understand the magic system herself because she knew her mom had this ability, but her mom died and they kind of hid it from her to a degree. So the main character was kind of left in the dark and how a lot of the magic works. And so that's why I think it comes out in the story that you're not really explained about the magic that much, but that is there. And I thought the beginning was really interesting, but even though you're going through this like murder mystery scenario. I found the middle of this book to be a little bland, which it can happen. <laughs> but once the character Vincent became more involved, it became much more interesting again. And I kind of got back into the story wanting to know what was going to happen. I did think the ending was very good. I liked how it ended. Maybe other people would not, but I did. I thought it was interesting. Part of it, I kind of guessed, but I liked how, I liked how it ended. And it did kind of set it up that there could be another book to this, which I'm intrigued to see if they end up doing another book and how that would play out because I think I would read that. This is the first book that I've ever read from this author. And while I wasn't like blown away, I did enjoy it and I did think it was really cool and I would continue to read her works. And I did give this three out of five stars. The next book that I read was From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I feel like I don't even have to explain what this book is about because everyone's heard of it. But basically you're following Poppy, who is the maiden, which means she is chosen to ascend. And you're kind of left in the dark of what that means for a very long time. But she wears like all white. She has a shroud over her face at all times. She's not supposed to show her face to people. She's not supposed to experience pleasure. She's not supposed to um, have worldly attachments, all that stuff. Then she has this moment with a man in a tavern and he ends up becoming her bodyguard and the story kind of goes from there. It seems like she's always in danger and these attacks start happening on the castle and her life. And so she's trying to survive and also kind of figure out what's going on with her new bodyguard. And then the story goes from there. If I say much else, it will spoil things. And I feel like that's what everyone says, but it's true because by the time some things are confirmed or revealed, it's towards the end of the book. This is a fantasy romance, I would say, the fantasy aspects are lesser and more so in a fantasy world where there's like vampires, werewolves, like all these things, zombie-like things, just all these different kinds of creatures, but you're not encountering them a lot in this book. You're just kind of hearing about them. So this book was fun. I actually, I really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to because I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, partially because I wasn't sure about the spice level in this. But the spice level was actually much less than I personally thought it was going to be, which I appreciated. I listened to this on audiobook most of the time, and I really liked the narrator. I thought she was really good. She did a couple of accents that were really fun. And it was just really easy to listen to and just get through quickly. So I feel like I would be listening to it all the time because it was just so easy to do that while you're doing other things, but still get the story. And I really enjoy that. And I wouldn't say this book was boring, but like I said, you are kind of kept in the dark for the plot for a lot of the time. And even at the end of the book, I would say that you have more pieces of the plot, but even so, you don't really know what the plot is. That's honestly my biggest concern as I'm gonna go through this series because I like plot and granted I enjoyed this book so maybe I would be fine but my biggest concern is that there's not really gonna be a plot at all and it's just gonna be a bunch of stuff happening because I have heard that the plot is non-existent and I'm a little nervous. There could be a lot of things said about Hawk and Poppy and the toxicity of these relationships. But honestly, male characters in these types of stories that we like are toxic. And that doesn't mean we like it in real life. And that doesn't mean we support it in real life, but it can be fun to read about. 
So when it comes to certain stories where I'm just like, yeah, this isn't the best. Um, this, this guy would not be the best. I would not date this person or condone this person in real life, but in a fantasy book, it's fun. And so I just kind of accept it. And that's okay. It's okay to read about and it's okay to enjoy reading about it. I do like Hawk. I like Hawk as a character. I like their banter. That was fun. I will say something. It was a, it was kind of strange with Poppy as a character because she's painted as being so sheltered from the world and pleasures and experiencing anything and yet she seemed to be pretty worldly in some aspects and I just thought that was strange because I feel like those two things do not correlate. Those aspects it was kind of odd but it is what it is. Overall it was a fun read and I enjoyed it and hopefully the series does not go downhill for me. Oh I don't know if I said but I did give this book four stars. The next book that I was able to read was one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that was Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. So despite this book being stunning, I really loved this book. It was really magical and whimsical, but also had very sinister elements to it. It reminded me a lot of Caraval and kind of the vibe and feeling you get from Caraval, how magical it is and how great, but I feel like Hotel Magnifique was more sinister than Caraval which I liked. The hotel and magic was really fun and cool. Oh, let me tell you what this book is about. So um, basically you're following these two sisters who want to have a stay at this hotel and they find out that they can potentially get jobs to work for the hotel. And so they end up doing that. But as they're experiencing the magic and learning more about this hotel, it like travels every night at midnight to a different place. And there's lots of like things that couldn't exist. And magic is seen as dangerous in this world if not controlled. And this is the only place magic is safe. And as they learn more about this hotel and everything that goes around the contracts that surround the hotel, because you have to sign the contract as a guest or staff to, in order to work or stay there, they think they find out that maybe there's more to this than meets the eye and that it's more dangerous and evil than they thought. So the elements of the hotel and the magic were really fun and cool. The more the story goes, the darker it gets, which I liked and kind of made you have the sense of urgency that kind of is... Um, building throughout the story and it just makes it such a fun ride and i'm a little i'm a little sad that it's a standalone because i would like to read more of the story but you know it was really good and i think it was really well executed i liked the sister bond and i liked how a lot of the magic aspects were affected by different relationships or elements that was really cool i'm trying not to give you a lot of like spoilery things but there's like points where the person, the summoner, I believe is called, I believe they're all called summoner, the main guy, the matriar, matriar, I don't know, the main guy that's leading this whole hotel, um, seems to be kind of really magical and amazing, and then it seems like he's a little bit fake, and then it seems like he's a little bit ruthless, and then the more you learn, the more you figure out why you can't get in trouble as staff, or things will happen to you, and it was just really fun ride. I really liked it a lot. I gave it four out of five stars. And the last book that I was able to complete in April was A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. I struggle whether I gave this book three stars or 3.5 stars, but I'll say it's 3.5 stars. This cover is unmatched in its beauty. I will say that I liked this book. I did like it, but I don't think I was in the right mood for it when I read it, and I think that affected it a little bit. The tea magic was amazing and really intricate and interesting and also very unique, which I think is cool. I love when books nowadays can do unique magic systems. And this book, the way it was just surrounded by tea just made this book feel very soothing, strangely, because there were like poisonings going on and dark magic and betrayals and assassination attempts and all of these things, but I think just because of how much it was surrounded by tea just made it a very soothing atmosphere and how all of the ancient practices of tea making were made a part of this book. But it seems so strange because there's a lot of like dark elements going on as well and danger. When you're starting this book, when you find out what's going on, because the main character basically unknowingly brewed the poison tea that killed her mother and they've been trying, she's been trying to figure out how her mother got this poison tea because it affected not only her mother, but other people in the land and they don't know who poisoned it and where it came from. And the same poison is affecting her sister. And so she's trying to find a way to save her and she en enters into this competition to become the emperor's tea maker. And throughout you get involved in like the 
politics and the dangers and the assassination attempts and all this stuff. But in the competition, it really reminded me of like one of those Food Network competitions, like those cooking competitions where you see people be like, okay, you have to make this food, but you have to use these three ingredients and you have to go buy the other stuff, go. Like there's elements of that to this, which was kind of cool to see like the food competition aspects coming out, but also being tea based and weaving magic into it. It was just really cool. And it was very, there was a lot of stories involved in this from their folklore. And it was really good, really interesting. I don't think I was in the right mindset or mood to read it when I did. So maybe that affected my enjoyment of it just a little, but I still did give it three out of five stars and I would recommend you pick it up if the premise is interesting to you. So those are all the books that I was able to read in April. I would love to hear what you guys were able to read in April and what your favorite read was, but that is it for today's video. So please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye. Thank you.